right, folks, welcome to the last part of chapter three. You can see chapter three doesn't require a lot of lecture. Chapter three sort of requires a lot of memorization work on your end, but it's doable. If I could do it, you could do it. Okay, now you've done the experiment and we talked about microscopic structure and we said, you know what? The whole uh, ionic compound, they're held together by these plus minus. And as we might guess, Professor Paul Abdul says, those are pretty strong. Well, how do we melt something? We have to get those things that were tightly bonded together to let go of one another to some extent, to sort of relax that structure. Well, if I've got pluses and minuses in ionic compounds, it takes a lot of energy to break those things up and get them to flow. Would you predict if that structure is plus or minus is sticking together, they would have a high melting point or a low melting point? Temperature. High temperature, right? Because you're saying like, yeah, you gotta crank them way up to get those plus minuses to break up. You better heat up really high to get those to flow. What did you see in lab? Giddy up. You saw, you cranked that, that hot plate up to 11 and it didn't melt. So you're like, this ionic stuff is held really strongly together. Yes, it is. Again, we're lifting up the hood of the universe and going, oh, pluses and minuses sticking together. You gotta put a lot of energy to melt that. That's gonna have a high melting point. So we'll say they have a high, and I'm just gonna say MP, melting point. You've gotta crank the heat way up to get them to melt. Now the other thing is we said, they have this plus and minus business. And if I've given you a hint that water, it's not really plus and minus. We could say it's plus-ish and minus-ish. So guess what? If water has a plus-ish and a minus-ish, it can get into an ionic compound and it starts to pretend like it's an ion. So I start to get from my compound, I get plus-ish parts sticking here and maybe minus-ish ions sticking there. So when you put an ionic compound in water, there's a very good chance, at least to some, some extent, maybe completely, that it will do what in water? It'll dissolve. So we'll say often, not always, often water soluble. And again, it's because we know the structure of water, we know the structure of the ionic compound, Bingo, all this stuff just falls right in our lap. I love this stuff. All right, let's finish up with, well, okay, what about more complicated ions? How do we put them together as formulas? How do we put them together as names? And then we'll take a little side trip to Gridley. No, we'll take a side trip to uh, acids and bases. Okay, now in the earlier lecture, we said things like, well, how do I memorize, or what's the name of F minus? Fluoride. What's the name of sodium plus? Sodium ion. Now, there are many ions that are composed of more than one atom. If you go in, you probably got sodium bicarbonate in your kitchen right now. That's not one element. That's hydrogen, carbon, and then three oxygens all somehow stuck together. The naming schemes mostly don't make sense to us. We're going to try to find a couple patterns, but for the most part, I have to know that H3O plus is hydronium. I have to know NH4 plus is ammonium, acetate, carbonate, hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate, chromate, dichromate, cyanide, and so on. There's just no other way to do it. I better have a flashcard here. I better have 20 flashcards right there if somebody says phosphate, I have to know the formula and the charge. If somebody writes CO3 2 minus, I have to know the name. It has to be instantaneous. I can't sort of think about it. I have to just know these. There are the flashcards. Now there's more. Now, I'm going to show you a few patterns that will make this easier, but it's not especially easy or elegant. It's making flashcards and doing that. Okay, now. You'll notice up here, if I can find it, can I find it? I'm going to have to pause the video. Where the heck is it? Oh, okay. Well, there it is right there. 
No, that's all right. Okay. I don't see chlorate there. No, that's all right. Here's chlorate. I made a flashcard way back when that says chlorate, CLO3 minus. Now, chlorate has chlorine, no surprise. What are the other elements that are like chlorine? Bromine and iodine. If this is chlorate, and here's bromine doing pretty much the same thing, what would be a good name for that? Bromate. Iodate looks like the same thing. Looks like chlorine, bromine, iodine are sort of the root there. What would you guess for the formula of iodate? Bingo. I've never memorized bromate, and I've never memorized iodate, but I memorized chlorate and said, well, bromine and chlorine and iodine behave similarly, so if I know that one, I know three. Okay, there's a shortcut. Here's another shortcut. There's chlorate. I made a flashcard for chlorate. I don't have any of the others memorized. But what do you notice if you go up here, here, here? What's the difference in those formulas? One more oxygen, one less oxygen, two less oxygens. Okay. So I had to memorize this. Eight and eight. Whenever I see an eight, sulfate, nitrate, chlorate, I know that I'm going to memorize that. And I know if somebody says chlorite or carbonite or nitrite or sulfite, it's one less oxygen. So, oh, okay. So I'll say one less oxygen is out. So chlorate, ClO3 minus, oh, chlorite must be ClO2 minus. So there's a pair. Now I want you to think about something. If there's a child in a classroom that's very, very active, um, we sometimes use this term, it's not a great term, but we would say, oh, that kid is hyperactive. No such thing exactly, but we use that term. So if I've got chlorate and I sort of ramp up the oxygens one more, hyper chlorate. So chlorate, oh, one more, hyperchlorate. Okay. Now, if you're a nursing student and you're thinking, oh, what's that needle that goes under the patient's skin? A, what kind of dermic needle? Hypodermic. So you're like, oh, okay. Below chlorite, hypochlorite. So I memorized chlorate. Oh yeah, one less is chloride. Oh yeah, below that is hypochlorite. Above chlorate, now here's the fib. I did this as a mnemonic, but that's really what it is. So chlorate, chl chlorate. Chlorate, one more, is perchlorate. One less, chloride. Two less, hypochlorite, below chlorate. So memorizing chlorate gave me those three. Memorizing chlorate here gives me four. And I can do the same with bromate and iodate. So you can see like, okay, there are some patterns. Not great, but there are some patterns. There are also some anomalies. Hydrogen sulfate, oh, here it is, hydrogen carbonate. In the medical field, they always call it bicarbonate. Same thing, here's hydrogen sulfate bisulfate. Hydrogen phosphate, biphosphate. So sometimes we'll leave off the one hydrogen and write bicarbonate, biphosphate, bisulfate, or we can say hydrogen carbonate, hydrogen phosphate, hydrogen sulfate. I just work here. Okay. The other trick is sometimes you'll see these written in a, like someone writes CLO minus. It's the same. Don't worry about it. The other thing with acetate, that gets written three different ways. Sometimes someone will say C2H3O2 minus. Same exact thing. Sometimes someone will write 
CH3 CO2 minus. Those are all variations of acetate. Oh, no, they're right, not that. Sorry. CH3 COO minus. They're all the same thing. C2H3O2, CH3CO2, CH3COO, all of those anion negative one charge, it's all the same. Sorry, I just work here. All right, let's do a little practice. I'm going to do a couple of these, leave some of these up to you. Copper, well, I'm just going to say copper, right? one of those that we can't predict so I have to say oh wait a minute this is copper 2 ion F is fluorine but I made that flashcard all those single atoms with a negative charge fluoride I'm gonna leave that one and that one up to you Silver one iron, I love this, A, G, plus. Don't have to think. Silver one, silver to plus one. Cuprous, I go, oh, there's cupric and cuprous. Cupric is the higher charge, cuprous is the lower charge. Oh, I made a flashcard and it said copper is two or one. Okay, cuprous, Cu, one plus. Now, we tend to drop off the ones, A, G, plus, Cu, plus, if you write one plus, it's fine. Homework might freak out a little bit. I'm going to leave those two up to you. I'm going to let you sort this out. It's a little funny here. Like, well, we haven't really done names of compounds, but if I start thinking about those, you can get that one. Pure memorization. I have to have a flashcard that tells me that, 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 that. Now, it might make you flashcards and come back to these, or you might go say, well, I'll go look these up now and kind of see, but that's going to be the nature. Immediately, if somebody says HPO42 minus, I have to go, oh, that's hydrogen phosphate. That was a mistake. All right. This one, eh, who cares? Okay. So this is practice, but you're maybe not ready for practice until you made your flashcards. All right. Now. We've got all these individual ions, polyatomic ions, monatomic ions. How do we put them together? Why is water, H2O, which is not an ionic compound, but salt is just Na and Cl? Let's think about this. Here are my cations in each of these. I've broken the cation off of each of those. Magnesium, sodium, and I have two sodiums. But I don't care. I'm just saying. What's the what's the what's the cation here? K plus. Doesn't matter that there's two of them. Right now, I'm gonna say, oh, that's the cation. From all those things I've memorized, that is the the cation that I memorized. Now, we never did something like this. We never said, oh, uh, there's an Na. 2, 2 plus. That isn't on our list of memorization anywhere. We never said something like, oh, there's K2, 2 plus, or plus, or something like that. Those don't exist. We have never seen a polyatomic ion like that. We've seen sodium and potassium. Same thing with this aluminum down here. We've never seen two aluminum stuck together, but I go, okay, AL, and I know which column it's in. I know my patterns. There we go. The anion, I go, okay, well, oh, there's sulfur. Oh, yeah, sulfur exists as a sulfide. Oh, CO3. I made a flashcard. CO3, 2 minus. Carbonate, I just have to know it. SO4, I have to see that as SO4, not S, and four oxygens. I have to immediately say, oh, that's sulfate. I have to just immediately have that. If you can't, chapter five, six, seven, the rest will just be a waste of time. In the real world, somebody's gonna say sulfate or carbonate, you're not, I don't know what it is. Okay, now here's what I want you to do. Add up those two charges, 
add up those two charges, add up those two charges. Oh, but by the way, there are two of those. Potassium, there's two of those. Aluminum, there's two of those. And the sulfate, there's three of them. I want you to add up all those charges. Stop the video and add up the charges for each of those compounds. You did it, right? You stopped and you said, okay, well, plus one and minus one, well, that's, that's easy. Plus two, minus two, that's, that's easy. Oh, I got two pluses over here, two minus here, zero. Are you starting to see a pattern there? Zero, zero. What is the sum of charges for all ionic compounds? Zero. If they don't add up to zero, you've got something wrong. So we'll say, that's a great way of saying this. Yeah, okay. Sum of charges of all ions equals zero. That's it. Nobody tells me, oh, it's two sodiums and one sulfur sulfide. Nobody says, oh, sodium chloride, that's one to one. No, no. How many so sodium ions do you need? How many chloride ions do you need? That's it. They add up to zero every time. Okay. Now, let's go through this exercise again. We just did this, but okay. Try not to look at the page above. Write down all the cations, all the anions. Li plus, magnesium two plus. You stop the video. I'll work. You stop the video and fill these out. Did you do it? Na plus, K plus, Al3 plus. You can't do it. Iron is one of those that comes in two charges. So I'm like, uh, I don't know, it's a two or a three, I think. Let's go over to the anions. Fluoride, oxide, sulfide, carbonate, sulfate. Now, S minus, I made a flashcard, and there's sulfide. PO4, I made a flashcard. PO4, 3 minus. What's the total charge have to be? Zero. If I have one iron and one sulfur, and the sulfur is minus two, the iron must be plus two. This often happens with those unpredictable transition metals where like, I don't know what the charge is by looking at the formula until I calculate it. If there's one iron and one phosphate, the iron must be that. Now when we name these, we do this. Lithium fluoride. Magnesium, oxide, sodium, sulfide. I'm saying the cation, the anion, cation, anion. That's it. Now, wait a minute. Do I have to say disodium? No. There's no prefixes that say that. I have to know, oh, how do I know it's two sodiums? Total charge has to be zero. Sulfur is minus two, sodium's one. That's the only formula it can be. Potassium carbonate. Aluminum, aluminum sulfate. Now, I don't know why this is very difficult for students. I didn't do well in nomenclature either, but I'm not going to say trisulfate. If you are, you are going to get it wrong. <laughs> I don't say trisulfate. I don't say dialuminum trisulfate. Just don't do it. 
I'd say aluminum sulfate. Oh, aluminum's plus three, sulfate's minus two. Oh, how many of each of those do I have to get to make that work? What am I gonna call this? I can't call it iron sulfide. This is wrong. And this is also wrong. Both wrong. Iron 2 sulfide, iron 3 phosphate. Did I say di, tri, tri no, no, no. Cation, anion. This is going to be your next tattoo. Ionic compound nomenclature, you say two things, the cation, the anion. I don't say di or tri or mono or any of that unless the ion actually has that in its name, which is pretty rare. Okay, so naming cation anion, that's it. Say the cation, the anion, the plus, the minus, that's it. All right, let's see here. Let's do a couple of these. Iodide ion, page 16. Well, I made a flash card, that's I minus. Magnesium ion, I made a flash card, that's two plus. Total charge has to be zero. Right? Oxide ion, aluminum ion. O2 minus aluminum Al3 plus. Now, students do this a bunch of different ways and they can all work just fine. What some students do is they say, well, I'm gonna find the lowest common multiple. What will two go into and three will go into? Well, they're both going to six. So a student might say, oh, if I get three aluminum, three oxygens, I've got minus six. Three oxides give me minus six. Oh, two aluminum ions, Give me plus six, zero. You can do it however you want. Al2O3 hits zero. Phosphate and iron two, isn't that what we did on the other page? Why did I do that same thing? Nah, I did not, nice. All right, I'm gonna let you do that same thing. It's gonna get a little bit ugly, that's okay. The answers to this are in the book, but the best thing to do would be have a bunch of classmates, you work on them, you look at the answer in the back of your book and see if you got it right and argue and sort it out. Oh, let's see. I'm gonna let you do this one. Yeah, I'm gonna put these as questions in the lecture. 20, 22. Okay, again, it doesn't make much sense to maybe do it right now let's do this I'll do these and then I'll leave these for you so phosphate PO4 3 minus iron 2 plus and in the formula I put the cation first and oh if I got two of those gives me negative six three of those Fe3 PO4 2 sulfate SO4 2 minus chromium Three plus. Math doesn't look too bad. Well, if I get three of those sulfates, minus three, two of those chromium threes, that gives me plus six, minus six, excuse me. Cr2 SO4 three. Now, you have to sort of reverse engineer go both ways. How did he pick that? Why is that? I'm trying to get to the total charge of zero. I'm gonna let you do those. I'm gonna put the 19, 20, 22. I'll put that at a little quiz. Do a couple of these. Now again, I have to recognize this is Sn and O2 minus. Now, there's two of them. And I have to immediately recognize it's not O2. Here I have to immediately recognize this, calcium, Cn, Cn. I have to immediately recognize this, Na, Na, 
CO3. If I don't see them breaking up that way immediately, I'm done. If I break up the C and the N, I'm done. If I break up the C and the O3, I'm done. Chem 51, come back next semester. Now I made flashcards. Okay, cyanide, cyanide, carbonate, sodium plus one, sodium plus one, calcium two, tin can be a two or a four. What do I need to make that work? There's my zero. 10, four, oxide. No dioxide, no mono tin, none of that. Calcium, is that two N? No, it's one N. Different disciplines, some disciplines put two N, some put, man, eh, it's all right. Calcium cyanide, sodium, carbonate. I'm not putting disodium. I'm not putting disyanide. I'm not putting di... Just, no. Cation anion. Lithium, I have to immediately see. That's that. Phosphate, I have to immediately know that. Copper 2. CO3 2 minus. Al3 2 plus. SO3 2 minus. I have to immediately know that. If I can do it, you can do it. And I want to get them to zero. I, well, how about if I put three lithiums with phosphate? Did that give me a zero? Copper two and carbonate, zero. Aluminum gives me a zero, right? You can see immediately if I don't know the, the names and charges on the ions, I'm dead. Okay. Uh, in recitation for chapter three, I think I have about 100 compounds. It means 80, 90, 100, something like that. And we're either going to write the name from the formula or the formula from the name. We spend about a solid two or three hours doing that exercise. Everybody walks out saying, okay, I get it. I had to sort of grind through this. And what most students say is, I'm not ready to do this. I'm not quite ready for a quiz, but I understand how it works, and I understand the parts that I need to have memorized and what I still need to know. Okay. Let's set that aside, ionic compounds, and look at something that is very closely related and incredibly important. Acids and bases have some things in common with ionic compounds, and sometimes they are ionic compounds. So it makes sense while we're thinking about ions, putting ions together, taking ions apart. It makes a lot of sense to stop right now and say, well, how do acids and bases sort of fit into this? So I have given you four examples of things we call acids. Now, you don't have to know anything about acids or bases, but if someone just gave you those four examples, what do they have in common? Is there anything you're like, well, they're all sort of doing something? Check with your classmates or answer my, my lecture quiz there on the side. What are each of those four acids doing that looks similar? You did it, right? You're, well, I didn't really know what's going on here, but oh, there's an H3O plus. There's an H plus. Oh, here's another H3O plus and another H plus. Now, is there anything else they had in common? Well, they all seem to be doing something with water. Water, 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 water. So we could say, well, somehow with water, They're making H plus or H3O plus. Don't exactly know, but like, okay, well, they're putting H plus or H3O plus. So there's four acids, HCl, two acids, HCl, H2SO4. Do you see any metal there? There's no metal. 
Well, you notice in this case, we sort of broke it up into ions. There's chloride and H+. Here, H2SO4, we broke it up into sulfate and H+. There's no metal there, but look at on the right, all ions. Well, there's no metal, but they do appear to have ions. Over here, H plus, Cl minus, H3O plus, SO4 two minus. So I guess in that sense, like when we take them apart, I get ions. But I notice in every single case, when I take, take it apart, what's the cation? In each of those cases, take it apart, what's the cation? All right, I probably put a little quiz there. You go, wow, H plus. And I see it, I go, oh, that's kind of funny. Starts with H, starts with H, starts with H, starts with H. So there's a bunch of clues. There's no metals, but it starts with H. And I put it in water, it either, that H plus breaks off, or I get H3O plus, and the other ion that's left over. Okay, that's our first hint about acids. Now these bases, do they contain metals? Yeah, they do. Sodium, magnesium, iron, those are all bases. Those are all, excuse me, those are all metals. I think, well, they're all metals. So these are actually ionic compounds. What do they do? What do they have in common? Pause and chat with your lecture mates. And you said, I don't really know what's going on, but I put them in water again. Hydroxide, hydroxide. Hydroxide. So somehow in water, and by the way, you notice water is not a reactant or a product. When we write water above the arrow, that just means that's where it has to happen. Not a reactant, not a product. It's like, okay, when I put this stuff in water, I get hydroxide. Bases, give me hydroxide. Acids, give me H+. Okay. And these are ionic compounds that we're looking at right now. And what's the anion? Sodium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide. Iron 3 hydroxide. There you go. So they're sort of fitting in there because they're compounds that somehow have ions in water. The acids are H pluses, the bases are OH minus. Hmm, pretty cool. This is hugely important, and we're going to come back to it. Last page. Here's your concept list. If you want to be ready for the final or you want to get ready for the quiz, like, oh, can I recognize ionic? Do I know what ionic compound is? What do, com what do ionic uh, compounds, what are they like? What's their ionic bonding like? Um, can I decide if it's a, um, I have to remember like, can I decide if it's a metal or non-metal? All those names and formulas. Names and formulas for these crazy polyatomic. Write the formula from the name, name from the formula. Identify acids and bases based on formulas now. And then what is it that we just saw that makes some acids and bases? All right, folks. We made it through chapter three. Nice work. I will see you at the next chapter. Bye now.